What is she going to talk about today? Hi class, today we're going to be learning about a very interesting topic that is very crucial to our the, time, the political time that we're living in right now and I find it's very important that all of you learn about it. So we're going to be or discussing the life of Khalif Browder. Khalif was born into the Child Protective Services in Bronx, New York. His mom was addicted to drugs, and so his foster mom ended up taking his two older brothers, and the New York law was that when um, you one child got taken away, if the next, whatever children you had after, if they were addicted to drugs as well, they were immediately taken to um, child services. It was when Khalif was 16 years old when his life was completely changed forever. Him and his friend were actually walking back from a party in mid-May of 2010. Um, just casually, it was around 3 in the morning. And just casually walking, talking, when two squad cars pulled up per on pursuit of him and Khalif and his friend. The police were on, this, on pursuit of a robbery that they believed taking place earlier that night of a backpack that contained a camera, a few hundred dollars, and other valuable items. Um, they were... The suspects they had were looking for were two black males, two younger black males, with the victim's brother at the time looking in the squad car through the Bronx at this time when they found Khalif and his friend walking home from the party. And this is when they were lights on, quick, quick to pull them over and search them right on the side of the street. And this is when him and his friend were both arrested and taken down to the precinct for this robbery. And this robbery actually turns out it was happened two weeks prior to this, on May 2nd of 2010, and not when they were getting arrested. Sorry class, we had to switch classrooms in the middle of our conversation, but we're moving on. Wait, didn't Khalif Brown have probation? He did have probation. Because his friend got off, but then because Khalif Browder had probation, they said they couldn't let him go, and they had to keep him. So now, he got he stays at the precinct and gets sent to Rikers, right? Yeah. Well, Michael said it was exactly right because he was already on a, a previous probation charge for stealing a bread truck with his friend when he was in his younger teenage years. And so after the questioning, his friend was sent home for having no previous charges, and Khalif was sent to Rikers Island, one of the worst prisons in all of America. And you gotta remember that he's a 16-year-old boy who was walking home from a party and he, with a still developing mind that really doesn't know why he's there and doesn't know what he's going to be doing there. So while, while he was in questioning, he ended up pleading not guilty because he had no idea of this crime. Yeah. Why didn't he just take a plea bargain or something when that made his life easier? Well, like, people usually take a plea, plea deal but, uh, instead of going to trial. Um, some just want to get out of jail and take the plea because they can ensure that they will stay out. Uh, people plead out because it resolves the matter quicker, but uh, Khalif Broder, he was adamant that he didn't do it, so uh, he didn't want to plead guilty to something he didn't do, and uh, he wanted to take the case to trial. The big basis of his story is that he, wanted, he, was, didn't, he wasn't going to plead guilty just because people were telling him to, of a crime that he knew he didn't commit. That probably made him PG really, really not like him. It definitely, mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely did. I heard Rikers was pretty awful. It actually is one of the worst prisons in America, and when he walked in those doors like that day, right after questioning at six in the morning, he had literally no idea what, how long he was gonna be there or anything was going down. And that's when the story really takes a turn because he walked in that night and he didn't see the late day for another three years. It's because the attorney was kept pushing back the date, right? Even though he exactly. went to court, they said. Exactly, nobody. every few weeks he would just try again, keep going to the court for seeing if they would bring up his trial. Just every single time. Disappointed. It's crazy, like at 16 years old, uh, you get sent to Rikers, one of the toughest prisons, and, and then on top of that, uh, you get abused by the inmates, uh, you get abused by the correctional officers, and there was a point in time where he was even withheld from eating. So exactly. It's just, uh, that's just crazy to deal with. Yeah, and two years of his trial were completely in solitary confinement. Yeah. So, so like, what, what about his constitutional rights? Like, weren't they violated? They were completely violated. His fifth and sixth rights were pretty much violated the whole entire duration of his um, sentence. And uh, so the threat to a speedy trial and the right to due process, two things that everyone has a complete right to. And it was after those three years that his uh, charges were finally dropped and he was released from Rikers at solitary confinement. Yeah. 
So after he got released, um, Khalif Browder did go to Bronx Community College, but he didn't finish. Yeah, but he had 4.0 when he was there. He did have a 4.0. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's true that he, he had multiple suicide attempts while he was incarcerated also. Yeah. It's just crazy. He So he tries to commit suicide in jail, like gets released into the real world, no, no counseling, no psychiatrist, no nothing. Exactly. It was this abuse that um, was a big factor in his lawsuit against New York City after he was released. It was while this lawsuit was still in effect that um, his lawyer and his family and friends were asking if he was okay and could see a drastic change in his behavior and his mentality and it just wasn't the bright um, Khalif that they had known. And it was June 6, 2015 when he actually took his life in his own home. His mother found him hanging from the back window of his house and she was obviously completely devastated. But made it a point to continue Khalif's legacy with purpose and she continued up she continued it for him even despite her illness and suffering from cancer at the time and she eventually helped end the lawsuit. It was Khalif's death that ultimately really launched um, a lot of reform in the New York justice system as well as just the United States American uh, justice system in general. Do you guys know any specific impacts you think uh, I think it highlighted uh, uh, racial disparities with law enforcement. For him to be, for, for him to be considered another suspect and, and something that is like to be affected this much, um, I think uh, it woke up a lot of law enforcement, a lot of citizens. On, uh, uh, in a split second, your life can change, all from the hands of law enforcement. Yeah. And um, I also uh, thought that to the celebrities such as Jay Z. And John Lennon also had a big, big impact on um, on the case, trying to pop, uh, popularize it yeah. so people know, like, and understand what's wrong with the case and why uh, it needs to be bigger and why it should be fixed. Like the whole nation knows now, and it's really picking up for some of people. There was also like actual change, like afterwards, because like it got such a big name. Um, there were laws saying that like adolescents shouldn't be in solitary confinement and like in New York like they changed how they handle cases with adolescents and I know that there were like all over the country people started to really evaluate like how they treat like young adults and adolescents in like prison and in lawsuits and I think, I think that's dope. Any more questions guys? Alright, well you guys can get out of here if you want, have a good night.